All right, so here's the largest bearing that I made, and of course it works. Um, I also made a variation um, where basically all I did was I took the model, you can do this with either the STL or the actual SOLIDWORKS model, and all you have to do is just mirror it, and then you get a double layer one, did that with the largest one just as a proof, and then you can also do that three times, and you can get a triple layer one. And this thing is incredibly robust, and this is one of the ones that I ran for 12 hours in the actual test. And that is the same size as this guy, but just three times as thick. And then I have the largest size that I have, and then here is the smallest size that I have. And yes, of course, it works. And it's very smooth. So this actually just happened to turn out to be the same size as one of these uh, 608Z bearings. I made a different version, and I'll show that in the next clip, where I've optimized the best I could um, to get the same internal diameter that you see here in, this, in, the, in the Z06. So I'll show that now. All right, so here is the original bearing that was roughly the size of the 608, just a little bit smaller. So I went in there and I made a one that's very specifically the same size as the 608. So its outer diameter matches precisely, and I will show that to you right now. 608, roughly 22 millimeters. The one that I made just a little bit thinner on the walls is also just about 22 millimeters. The internal diameter of this one, the original 608, should be around eight, yep. And then mine is probably just a little bit under eight because of 3D printing, or eight exactly, sure. <laughs> and as you can see, spins really well. As for other 3D printable bearings, there are, there is, you know, there's Emmett's classic thing, which could technically be used as a bearing, um, but I guess for an equivalently sized external diameter, which, you know, this is pretty small, I guess it's still smaller, but you get a, you know, you get a very tiny internal diameter, though it is very stable, and I, I think it's very smooth, um, but not very space efficient, I guess. The only other um, 3D printable bearings are these ones that I found online, and they do seem to get the job done relatively well. Um, they're relatively loud, um, they have a lot of friction, um, but you could definitely put some like silicone lube in there and it'd probably be a little bit better. Here I was testing how much axial load all the bearings could take, starting from the smallest and going to the largest and they all passed and I was unable to push any of them apart um, up until I got to the 100 millimeter sized internal diameter bearing and then as you see here it failed. However this was the 100 millimeter one that ran so they might go a little bit higher without failing. Passes. Failure. All right, long story short, I'm gonna be uploading videos here and there, documenting my process of designing my own robot dog. And from my own requirements, I decided that I wanted to use BLDC motors for more power and hopefully some faster movement speeds and some dexterity. I will explain my reasoning for the decisions I made about what actuator choice I decided to go with in a different video. But for now, I'm just going to focus on the bearings themselves as they're vital for the actuators, the robot dog joints, and potentially for your project as well. Before I could rely on these bearings to prototype my entire robot dog, I needed to verify that they would be robust enough for my purposes. So I made this test fixture that you see, and I ran it for 24 hours with the support bearings holding the shaft being ran for 24 hours, and the two versions on the top bearing being ran for 12 hours each. The total amount of weight in the bag hanging off of the top bearing and the test fixture is around 25 pounds. The shaft is doing around 11 revolutions per 10 seconds, so around 110 revolutions per minute. 
So each of the bearings that was supporting the main shaft directly did a total of around 158,000 revolutions in total over that 24 hour testing period. And the top bearings that were directly holding the weight did around 79,000 revolutions in total since I switched them out halfway through to test different variations. Overall, if you want a more robust bearing that can handle more of an axial load or even more radial load, then you're probably gonna want them to be multi-ring like the ones that were transparent that I'm showing right here. So here's what they look like. Here's what they look like pretty much brand new when they haven't been run. And as you can tell, there is pretty much no play in them. It's, there, there's, there's no, there's no play in these. Um, here's another good example of what it should look like on the back side. There's just a very small gap and it's, um, I don't know, it's pretty much perfect. But if you compare that to the ones that have been ran for, for those, uh, these ones have been run for 24 hours, these two, the gap is a little bit larger. So there definitely has been some wear and you can see that there is some play now. Not much, and it still and it still rolls, and I actually still can't push it out. Same thing on this one. This one was also ran for 24 hours. Um, you can see that there is just the smallest amount of play now in comparison to the one that wasn't ran for 24 hours, and there is uh, virtually zero play in this guy. So this one was ran for 12 hours, and this one had the full had the full brunt of uh, 25 pounds on just one single one single blade and this one when I when I push it out I can definitely push that out and you can see it's just itching to come apart too um, very easy to pull apart so this would definitely have to be supported it still functions as a bearing but you can you can clearly see when it's just one layer thick um, and you have that much weight on it and you run it for uh, 12 hours and X amount of cycles <clears throat> it's pretty flimsy but that's why I printed this triple because this triple was printed in um, Pet G actually, but it's the same it's the same diameter as you can see, and uh, absolutely no way I can push this out. This is the strongest bearing I have. Um, nothing is gonna nothing is gonna tear this apart. So yeah, if you need if you need a lot of strength, all you got to do is take that initial, that initial, uh, that initial 3D model and then mirror it to the right and to the left, and then you'll have a triple. And in theory, you might be able to go actually larger than that. If you really needed to have more than three lanes, you probably could. But man, if you need that much, uh, you, <laughs> you can do it. You can do it, and uh, all of luck to you. I'd love to see what the absolute weight limit of these things is. I don't, I don't have enough weight on hand all I have is a bunch of water, of uh, you know, milk jugs. So that, that's pretty much the best I could do. So yeah, after all that running, I still can't push them out. Um, all these are still solid, except for this guy. So if you're gonna be putting 25 pounds on it and you're gonna run it for 12 hours um, continuously <laughs> at X revolutions per minute, uh, you might need more than one layer. However, um, if you don't want to do, if you don't have a lot of weight, maybe, um, which I was definitely putting on these to test their weight capabilities, but uh, if you don't have a lot of weight and you just kind of need something to spin pretty quickly, then these will also work really well for that too. So here's a quick demonstration of uh, this cute little guy, just a tiny little thin boy. And he, he spins incredibly well. And as you can see, they spin for a long time. Very, very fluid. So you can definitely get some, some high revolution spins for some very low friction, but I think if you're gonna be spinning it, you know, ridiculously fast, um, these things are definitely going to melt 
if they're made out of PLA and they have absolutely no lube. So at the very least, put a little bit of silicone grease on there. So you can't see it because it's out of frame, but I am going to be putting um, as much as my weight on this as I can, and you can't see it. But it is still rotating, and I would venture to guess that since my feet are almost off of the floor, I might have a majority of my weight on this thing, so... I think it's safe to say that this thing can probably withstand about 150 pounds pretty easily um, or more. So I need three 30 millimeter internal diameter bearings per cycloidal gearbox. And the cheapest ones I could find were around 35 to 40 ish dollars per. And then I also need an additional 70 millimeter internal diameter bearing per cycloidal gearbox. And the cheapest one I could find there was $70. Now, the 30 millimeter internal diameter bearings that were online, they were roughly 16 millimeters thicker than my equivalent one. And the one that was 70 millimeters internal diameter was approximately 65 millimeters thicker than my equivalent bearing. And as for weight, I have no idea how much more they weighed, but I can guarantee you it was quite a lot, <laughs> considering mine are made out of plastic. So that saves me around $175 per cycloidal drive. And since I need 10 of those, that's around $1,750 saved. I never would have spent that anyway, but I consider it saved to make me feel better. So which calculating it out for all the other bearings I will likely need for the rest of the robot dog, it would be around $3,500. And that's if I went through McMaster Car, Amazon, eBay, and other companies like MSC. That's where these, these values have been tabulated from. I didn't feel like coming through Alibaba or AliExpress, but I'm certain there are other ways to get these bearings for cheaper. But it doesn't matter for me anyway, since I'm not even going to use them. So these are plenty good for me and my purposes, and I'm likely not going to upgrade to full bearings, A for the cost, and B for the size and the weight penalty. But I would say for most people's projects that are 3D printed or just hobby, I think these are going to be pretty sufficient. But obviously, if you're going to need an excessive amount of weight or you're going to need some really high RPMs, then real bearings are always going to be necessary for you. Um, I hope you have good luck with them because they've been treating me pretty well. So uh, if you want more updates on the robot dog project in the future, then you know what to do.